Hi, this is David at Mash IT. Very excited to be doing a new Apple product today. This is an unboxing and uh, first thoughts on the new Apple Silicon MacBook Pro that's just been released today. I'm going to do a quick unboxing and then we're going to do a little bit of an overview and a few ben initial benchmarks on this uh, laptop to see if it sort of stacks up to Apple's marketing claims. We've also got the MacBook Air just coming in as well, so as soon as this one's finished and uploaded we'll be working on the MacBook Air too. So please subscribe um, and hit the notifications if you want to see further videos on this and the MacBook Air that's uh, going to be done next. Let's get started. No need for the knife today. Apple do make it very easy to get into the box. So box within a box. There we go. Get rid of that. And there we are. This is the base Apple Silicon MacBook Pro uh, released today, as I said. So let's get inside and take a look. Nice new cover art on the boxes. Come on. There we are. One laptop. Probably nothing you haven't seen before if you've seen the base 2020 MacBook Pro. A USB-C lead. The usual Apple pamphlet with some Space Gray stickers because this is obviously the Space Gray edition. A bit of information that I'll never read. One plug, UK plug because obviously I'm in the UK. And a 61 power brick. This is the same power brick that you get in the Intel model. Right. Just quickly get all that rubbish off. Or maybe like a paper nowadays, so no plastic to remove. There's the power brick with the cable. Put that to the side. Now let's unwrap the laptop. Do make these nice and easy to get into. Okay, we're going to open it up. One finger, sliding on the desk. Wow, the Apple chime is back. Obviously this comes with Big Sur, so it looks a little bit different out of the box if you're used to your 2020s and previous MacBook Pros with the Intel. Uh, but obviously Big Sur has released to the public now as well. So the MacBook Pro has got the True Tone display. Uh, I do like using it when I'm not doing anything colour critical. It is easier on the eyes I find. Okay, so we're in. So this is Big Sur. Externally, it looks exactly the same as the Intel models it's replacing. Quite surprised with the power brick. Uh, I thought with this being a much more efficient machine, according to Apple, I did expect maybe a 30 watt power brick. So that's a bit interesting. One thing we will be doing in an upcoming review is testing power draw at the wall to see what these are actually pulling when they're on load. So I'm just gonna do a quick run through of the uh, MacBook Pro, just in case you haven't used one of the last couple of years Intel models. This is the Apple Silicon base model with eight gigabytes of RAM and the M1 chip. Now with these new Apple Silicon chips, they're pretty much all the same unless you buy the base Air, which has got one GPU less, I believe. You can customize them to get up to 16 gigabytes of RAM, but I just wanted a base just for the purpose of this review. So you've got the same force touch trackpad as you've had for the last few years. It's a fantastic trackpad to use. Uh, the keyboard, Obviously we've got the Magic Keyboard now and having used it on my uh, 2020 MacBook Pro, this is a really lovely keyboard to use. I've been really enjoying this keyboard. After the sort of monstrosity of a uh, butterfly keyboard, which I absolutely hated, coming back to these is really nice because you've, you've got the same sort of feedback as the old sort of keyboards, but it's the keys are a lot more firmer, I would say. They don't rattle around like the original sort of 2013, 2014, 2015 MacBook Pros. With the screen, we've obviously got the Retina display with 500 nits of brightness. Obviously we saw it has True Tone, which is quite good, say unless it's colour critical work, but it does look nice on your eyes. Big Sur comes out of the box, as we discovered. 
and let's have a quick look at the ports. There isn't really a lot. As this is the base model, you get two Thunderbolt 4 ports on the left side, and if we spin it round, we get a headphone jack on the right side. That is it. And I think that's a little bit of a shame with these models. Uh, I would have liked to have at least maybe one of the actual Thunderbolt 4 ports on either side, because having the 4 port Intel model, uh, it's lovely to be able to plug your uh, charger in either side of the machine. But you know, this is the base, obviously this is how they cut the custom, try and justify you moving up to the more expensive models. And I'm sure we will see a more expensive Apple Silicon model in the coming months. Right, so what we're going to do now, uh, we've just been using it for a few minutes, we were on battery. Just wanted to sort of get an estimate of how batteries last in, but we were start at 77% and went down to 73 and that's been installing quite a few apps and bits and pieces, so that's not bad so far. We will do a dedicated battery test for the review in the next couple of days. So let's make a start. Firstly, we're going to look at Blackmagic Speed Test to have a look at the SSD. Now you need Rosetta for this to actually work. It will prompt you to install it when you click on it. So let's get a quick, this is the 256 gigabyte SSD in the uh, base MacBook Pro. Okay, we're getting a score of 2,243 megabytes per second on the right, and we're getting a score of 2,717 megabytes per second on the read. Now this is the base 256 gigabyte uh, SSD in the base model. So that's really impressive for a, a base 256 gigabyte SSDs. So well done Apple on that front. So we're gonna do a quick uh, geek bench we're going to start with the CPU, we're running on battery, run the CPU benchmark. Okay, so we've got a Geekbench 5 single core score of 1727. That is an absolutely amazing score for a uh, base processor. Uh, quite impressed with that. And a multi-core score of 7521. So again, this absolutely destroys the 13 inch Intel MacBook Pro. I'm going to do some comparison reviews with the other Macs out there to see how it sort of fits in against the 16 inch and the 13 inch. So stay tuned for those videos. And now I'm going to quickly run the graphics just whilst this is running as well. Uh, I've been using this now, as I say, for about half an hour, installing things, running this benchmark. So far, there's no heat on this keyboard deck or up here, like there's on the, the Intel version, and the fan hasn't even come on yet. I'm going to run Cinebench next, and I'm sure the fan will probably come on for that. So an OpenCL score of 19,149, again, that absolutely destroys the 13-inch Intel Mac, which I think scored about 10,000, so pretty much double the score there. That's very impressive. So, I'm going to look at Cinebench, see if we can get this thing to heat up as well. Still absolutely no heat on the machine. If you've used the Intel models, you'll know how much they heat up. So, really impressive so far. So we're nearing the end of the second run through on this test. And there's actually now a little bit of heat on the keyboard. I mean, I would call it lukewarm, whereas before you couldn't feel anything. So you, the process is obviously is warming up now. Still no fan. So we're approximately five minutes, four or five minutes into this uh, Cinebench R23 test. The fans actually came on for the first time, but they're almost inaudible. So it's certainly not howling like the Intel model is. I had to honestly put my ear to it to tell that it was actually the fans I was listening to. Okay, so we're nearing the end of this Cinebench R23 test. This is 10 minutes long approximately uh, on this R23, so it's quite a long, strenuous test for these laptops to go through. Just a few points of note. The fan has finally come on. It came on, I think, about halfway through the test, uh, but it never gets obnoxiously loud. I, I, when it first came on, I was wondering if it was actually the fan that was actually on. It was so quiet. Uh, when we got to a heavier part near the end of the test, it ramped up a little bit. But again, it was very, very, very quiet, especially in comparison to the Intel, which would be absolutely screaming by now in comparison. I'm gonna do a comparison review in one of our upcoming reviews between this and the Intel MacBook Pro, and I will get some decibel readings as well so that you can compare them. Also, the laptop doesn't get hot. So here we go, we've got a CPU multi-core score of 7,706 points. Uh, that is a pretty impressive score. I'm going to run the R23 on the uh, MacBook Pro 13 and 16 inch uh, in the forthcoming reviews and we'll compare those, but straight away that does look very impressive. So we've been playing with this for about an hour now, <clears throat> so this is just very early first impressions. What I'm really, really impressed with so far using this out of the box is the fact that it doesn't heat up and the fans are particularly quiet. Running benchmarks for 20 minutes and it didn't get loud. 
and the machine wasn't scorching on the keyboard or hot on the bottom. So that compared to the Intel is very, very impressive. Also, the Geekbench scores and the Cinebench scores are really impressive. We've had some problems with Unigen Heaven, which is probably just teething problems with the Rosetta. So we're going to sort of play around with that over the next day or so and hopefully come back in our performance uh, review of this model uh, with more information on that and hopefully we'll have got it working by then. But so far this is looking really good. The graphics performance in Geekbench was also twice the power of the 13 inch MacBook Pro top end model so that's really impressive. So I think once we've ironed out a few little bugs this could be a really fantastic little machine and you know if you're used to using the Intel having something that isn't hot and loud that is an absolute winner. So if there's anything you'd like us to test for you with this new uh, Apple M1 MacBook, please drop it in the comments below and we'll do our best to add it into the performance review we'll be working on over the next day or so. So please like and subscribe and hit the notification bells if you want to see more content on this laptop. And also by the time this goes up, we will hopefully have pretty much finish the MacBook Air that we've just received in as well. Uh, that way we're having the same sort of treatment as this one. So please hit the notification bells if you want to see those videos coming shortly. Thank you for watching.